Hello, I'm Sue Romanoff from Edison Group. Today I'm joined by Martin Zumaski, CEO of Molecure. Welcome, Martin. Hello, Sue. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Could you provide an overview of Molecure's clinical development strategy, lead assets, and your focus on developing novel drugs with new mechanisms of action? I'm excited to tell you about Molecure, a company built on strong science, discovering potential new therapies in uh, several incurable diseases where there are very few treatment options. Um, what we do is we're a clinical stage biotech company that uh, discovers uh, small molecules uh, interacting with novel proteins and also directly modulating the function of mRNA to address various incurable diseases. Uh, we have seven distinct programs in our pipeline. The most advanced compound is OATD01. It's a chitinase inhibitor that's about to start phase two trial uh, in sarcoidosis patients. Sarcoidosis is one of the interstitial lung diseases where there are no currently available treatments. Uh, we're planning a study in the United States and in Europe uh, for uh, about 90 patients with sarcoidosis in about 20 to 30 centers. Uh, this study will take about two years and the expected endpoints is reducing the granuloma burden, which is something that forms in the lungs of sarcoidosis patients uh, and it uh, reduces their pulmonary function. So this is a very innovative endpoint. It will be measured by uh, radiological uh, technologies, PET and CT scans. Uh, and we hope that this will prove the utility of D01 in treating diseases where chronic inflammation leads to tissue remodeling and formation of these granulomas. Um, this is uh, the second most advanced uh, program is OATD02. It's a dual arginase inhibitor, uh, which has recently started a phase uh, one study in cancer patients with solid tumors. Uh, this study will go on for about 18 months, and we're primarily looking for efficacy signals, uh, but also uh, for safety, I'm sorry, signals, but also uh, for early readouts on efficacy. Uh, we have an early stage pipeline uh, of very exciting programs in the DUB with an ACE platform, uh, mostly with our oncological applications, where we are in advanced lead stage for USP7 inhibitor and uh, lead optimization for USP21. Uh, the new exciting area of uh, discovery research is at our mRNA uh, discovery platform, where we develop small molecules uh, that directly uh, modify the translational function of RNA fragments, uh, preventing the production of uh, pathological proteins. This is a very novel approach that has been around only for a few years and only a few uh, companies in the world are addressing uncurable diseases uh, using this technology. Um, so this, the, this is it in a nutshell, as far as the company, our DNA is une unexplored targets and, and novel mechanism of action. We look for, for targets that have that address multiple pathways, therefore being a, a, able to address also a broader range of diseases. So, so targeting new disease pathways could provide market differentiation. Maybe you could share some data points that provide confidence in the clinical effort in way. Sure, so, so kite one that, that OATD01 is targeting is, is an example of such, such a target. Um, and uh, HIT1 is expressed at very basal levels in healthy individuals. However, in diseases uh, with chronic inflammation, uh, it, there are uh, cells that are called macrophages, uh, which are pathologically activated and they overexpress HIT1. And we know that HIT1 is involved in the transition of anti-inflammatory macrophages into macrophages that are of the pro-inflammatory and pro-fibrotic type. And they're also, in, the kite one is also involved in, in, involved in the crosstalk between the, these pathologically activated macrophages and fibroblasts. 
And uh, macrophages are sort of plastic, um, long-lived uh, cells that are capable of changing their environment. And we think of this, this molecular process uh, of uh, compare it to uh, checkpoint inhibitors, uh, which have led to uh, many breakthroughs in treatment, especially of, of solid tumors in recent years. And we believe that addressing uh, this crosstalk between macrophage, uh, profibrotic, and pro inflammatory macrophage and fibroblasts. Uh, can revolutionize the treatment of uh, air, airway uh, remodeling and, and treatment of interstitial lung diseases where this remodeling takes place. And we know that type 1 uh, is one of the key players in this process. So in, in preclinical setting, we have tested our, our uh, compound in numerous um, animal models where the pathogenesis and disease progression are seem to be driven by this mechanism uh, in different animal species and in different disease models, uh, and also in different organs. So we've observed significant reduction of the disease burden in, in animals with um, sarcoidosis, with uh, pulmonary fibrosis in the lung, uh, IBD in the gut, uh, or NASH in the liver. So all these diseases seem to have the common denominator of, of uh, chronic inflammation um, driven changes in tissues uh, which are related to the macrophage and fibroblast crosstalk. So in order to more uh, to, to, to sort of prove the, the pathological role of kite one, we bred knockout mice with the gene of kite one being silenced. Uh, and we uh, compared the, the, the results uh, in a model of lung fibrosis in wild type animals with the gene expression and, and the knockout mice where there was no kite one gene. And then the kite one deficient mice showed a much milder uh, progression and phen phenotype of the disease, meaning that type one actually does play uh, play an important role in inducing inflammation and fibrosis in the lungs of, of mice in this case, because these were animal models. Um, we also utilized the te technique that's called uh, uh, single cell sequencing. Uh, uh, there is an atlas that uh, you can identify at different cell populations. And the macrophage population um, that strongly overexpressed type 1 was only present in the lungs of fibrotic patients, whereas in healthy donors, uh, this was completely absent and there was no type 1 expression whatsoever. And this is a translational uh, genetic uh, confirmation that, that the kite one has, has plays the profibrotic uh, role also in, in human lungs, not only in mice. <laughs> um, in, in a different model um, uh, of, of uh, NASH, a rat model, we also showed uh, after administration of our compound a full, um, uh, a full switch in the, in the gene expression of several profibrotic gene uh, genes that were present in this model, and after administration of our compound, they were completely uh, reversed in terms of the gene signature. So, so we have different confirmations, both in, in, in human material and in animal models, in various organs, where it seems like type 1 is the relevant target uh, to, to address the several diseases with this common denominator of chronic inflammation driven tissue remodeling. And uh, in, in our study in sarcoidosis, actually kite one is, is used as a clinically validated biomarker of disease progression. The higher expression of kite one, the more advanced uh, the disease. What key catalysts should investors look for in the next 12 to 18 months? So in the next uh, 12 to 18 months, we accept uh, a rich news flow from the clinical development programs. Uh, and, and the catalyst news may be uh, the first one is the FDA approval of the 
OATD01 study in sarcoidosis. We expect that uh, towards the end of this quarter, followed by EMA approval and the first patient dosed in that study. Uh, intermediate readouts, although blinded, uh, will be uh, will will be available uh, in early 2024, and then we would have a recommendation for an unblinded committee to continue the study as is, modify it, or not continue. We hope for the first option, obviously. With D02, it's an un unblinded study, and therefore we will be monitoring the progression uh, of. Uh, the subsequent cohorts looking at safety and, and efficacy readouts throughout the study. We hope to reach the maximum tolerated dose and the phase two recommended dose already before the end of this year. The study will continue for about 18 months. And in the early stage programs, we anticipate a clinical candidate nomination, most likely in the USP7 program and the validation of our uh, technology in our mRNA targeting small molecules, uh, which is a confirmation of the modification of selected mRNA fragment function. Uh, so the utility of, of this approach in discovering novel small molecules interacting with mRNA. Great. Thank you, Martin, for helping me understand your company. Thank you all for joining us here today. If you'd like to learn more about Molecure, please refer to edisongroup.com. Thank you.